Polygon just released new Pol smart contracts onto the Goelli testnet. In case you're out of the loop, Polygon is making a big upgrade to the existing Matic token to become POL or Pol. The new token is kind of designed to serve all of the innovations that Polygon is coming out with in the vision of Polygon 2.0. It is becoming what's called a hyperproductive token, which means it's going to have multiple purposes and serve multiple chains, including Polygon's main chain, the proof of stake chain, which is becoming a ZK Validium, the ZK EVM, as well as more recently, all of the new application or app chains being powered by Polygon's chain development kit called the Polygon CDK. In case you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, here is the link to a video explaining the poll changes and here is a link explaining what is happening to the Polygon proof of stake chain becoming a ZK Validium. So this tweet comes from the OX Polygon devs handle on Twitter. And essentially it says today after the initial kind of three Polygon improvement proposals, 17, 18, and 19, we have released the whole contracts onto the Goeli testnet, which is just an Ethereum testing environment. So the actual smart contracts that are going to be utilized for poll, at least at this point in time, have actually been launched launched on this testing environment. And we're going to go and go through the actual code and see how this works under the hood and what you can expect in terms of actually upgrading your Matic tokens if you are holding those in your wallet. So the smart contracts are actually broken up into three separate contracts. The first of which is the Polygon Ecosystem Token Smart Contract, which is a standard ERC-20 token with some uh, permissions on who can call specific functions and kind of built in security mechanisms and emissions that we'll look at shortly. The second one is the Polygon Migration Smart Contract, which is going to help migrate from Matic to Pol. And the third and final one is the Default Emission Manager, which is kind of the smart contract responsible for emitting new poll tokens, which we'll take a look at what that means from the poll white paper. The first one we're gonna look at here is the Polygon Ecosystem Token Solidity Smart Contract. So if you don't know what ERC-20 is, it's kind of a standard fungible token, which essentially in a lot of cases means cryptocurrency, but more generally, it is a standard for creating tokens on the Ethereum network. So ERC-20 is just a, a standard for creating tokens that are fungible, meaning each token is equivalent to each other token and you can kind of divide that token up into typically 18 decimals, meaning you could send 0.0000001 ETH or in this case, Pol. It's just a standard way of creating tokens in Ethereum. So what we have here is actually very standard. So we have inheritance of the ERC-20 permit uh, smart contract provided by uh, Open Zeppelin, which again is very standard for these fungible tokens. What we have here is in the constructor, which is called when this smart contract is deployed, we're essentially setting the name to Polygon Ecosystem Token, the symbol to P-O-L, and within the constructor here, we're granting a couple of roles. So we're granting the default admin role, which goes to, of course, the governance address here, which is provided in the constructor. We're then granting the emission role, which is going to go to the emission smart contract, which we'll look at uh, in a moment here. Again, we're granting the governance address a cap manager role. After the granting of each of these roles, we're going to mint this is 10 billion poll into the migration smart contract. And we'll talk about what that looks like and why that's happening when we take a look at the actual migration contract next. And then finally, we just set this last mint variable to the current time. So we're essentially saying the last time any tokens was minted was right now when the contract got deployed because we just deployed 10 billion of those poll tokens to the migration smart contract. Built on top of the ERC-20 standard, we have our own mint function beneath this and we have an update mint cap function here. This first mint function is only callable by the emissions role, which if you remember, was granted to the emissions manager smart contract inside of this constructor here. So what's going on in this function is we're allowed to mint tokens for the emission manager contract. So this is only callable by the emission manager smart contract. Essentially what's happening here is it calculates the time since we last minted some tokens. We're calculating the maximum amount of tokens that we can actually mint since last time we minted. And we'll talk about why that's happening in a second here. Here we're saying, hey, you're trying to mint too many tokens if the amount that we're minting is greater than the maximum allowed since last time we minted. If everything looks good, we again update that last mint time value here, which is stored um, on line 17 here in this last mint variable. 
And if everything looks good, we just go ahead and call the actual built-in ERC20 mint function to whatever address is receiving these tokens. Here in the PIP17 proposal, you can actually see why this is happening. So you can see in the event of an exploit to prevent any arbitrary amounts of poll being minted, there is a variable hard cap on the maximum amount of tokens that are allowed to be minted per second. So that's what we're calculating here. Hey, how many uh, tokens can actually be minted since the last time we minted until now? So you can see that's actually set on line number 16 here, which is actually changeable in this next function that we're going to look at next. But right now it's at 10 poll tokens per sec. So this is saying, hey, how many seconds have elapsed? How many tokens can we mint multiplied by how many seconds have elapsed? So essentially 10 times the number of seconds since the last time we minted. If it's less than that amount, then actually go ahead and mint those tokens. So it's sort of preventing a, a kind of breach or an exploit in case something goes massively wrong. It's kind of a built-in security mechanism to say, oh crap, something's gone seriously wrong here. Let's actually hard cap the number of tokens that can be minted in each kind of second that has elapsed since last time we minted. So that's essentially what's going on. And you can see the next sentence here, due to the size and complexity and importance of these actual contracts is going to go through various audits, of course. So that's uh, a given in any of these important smart contracts, it's going to be audited. And hopefully this uh, security mechanism doesn't ever have to be called here. That brings us to the final function in this smart contract, which is update mint cap. And hopefully if you've been following along, you can imagine what this is going to do is essentially going to say mint cap per second, which is this variable determining how many new poll tokens can be minted each second is going to be changed by some new cap that gets passed in by the cap manager role, which if you remember was provided to the governance address in this constructor here. The second smart contract we're going to look at is the actual Polygon migration smart contract. So this is essentially responsible for allowing the one-to-one -one migration from Matic tokens to kind of upgrade them to the new Pol token in that ERC20 smart contract that we just looked at. So essentially what this smart contract does is it allows you to send funds to it in a function. And then within that function, it's going to swap your tokens that you gave to it in the form of Matic with poll tokens, which if you remember, it received 10 billion poll tokens from this ERC20 smart contract in the constructor here. So as soon as a token gets deployed, we provide the address of the migration smart contract, which is deployed before this one. And then we mint 10 billion poll tokens to the migration smart contract, which we're looking at here. So right off the bat, it already has 10 billion poll tokens to kind of um, utilize to give out in part of this migration process. So essentially what we're doing in here is there is a modifier called only unmigration unlocked, <laughs> which is kind of confusing, but essentially this is determined by the governance of um, the Polygon ecosystem in this function down the very bottom here. So it's essentially all it's doing is saying, the allows the governance to lock or unlock the unmigration process. And unmigration in this context means going back from poll back to Matic. So if you have the upgraded version poll, for some reason you wanna go back to Matic, then this is what determines whether you're allowed to do that. So this is a modifier that you can attach to specific functions to say whether or not this is allowed. So the governance of the Polygon ecosystem is going to be able to determine whether or not you're going to be go um, whether or not you're going to be able to swap your poll token back to Matic. And this is um, determined by this function here. Okay, so it says, if the unmigration is locked, then you're not going to be able to swap back to Matic. If it is not locked, then you are going to be able to swap back to Matic from poll. And that is only really relevant in this unmigrate function here, which we'll look at shortly. The one that you probably really care about here is First, this migrate function. So before we dive into the migrate, let's quickly touch on this set polygon token here. Essentially, all we're doing is we're setting the address of where the ERC20 token is actually deployed. So if you remember, we're deploying this smart contract first and then the ERC20. So we need this function to say, hey, where is that ERC20 token of the Polygon ecosystem token actually deployed to? So we're able to provide a smart contract address for this actual ERC20 token here. 
that's all that is doing. The main function of the smart contract is this migrate function here. So as you can see, it's very simple. All we're doing is saying from whoever's calling this function, which is the message.sender. So imagine you're trying to migrate your uh, Matic over to Paul. You're going to first safe transfer from, which essentially just means send from your wallet address to the smart contract, a specific amount. So you're sending in a given amount of Matic to this smart contract. This smart contract is going to call the actual Polygon ERC20 tokens safe transfer function to go from the Polygon actual ERC20 smart contract to message.sender, which is you with the same amount. So you provide an amount. It says, hey, you need to provide that amount of Matic and then if you have that amount of Matic, which is kind of included in this safe transfer from, it's gonna take that, transfer it to this smart contract and then provide you with the exact same amount of the actual Polygon token. So let's just give 10 Matic in or 100 Matic in or 1000 Matic in, transfer 1000 pull out. That's all that's doing. And then unmigrate is just doing the opposite. So you can see the exact two statements are pretty much copy and pasted into this function. They're just reverse. So it's taking Polygon and giving back Matic. So from Paul to Matic, which is restricted by this modifier here called only unmigration unlocked, which we talked about earlier, is determined by the governance of whether or not you can swap backwards from Paul to Matic. The third and final smart contract we're going to take a look at here is the default emission manager. And before we actually dive into the code, I wanted to show you this emission section of the Paul white paper here. So if you haven't read this, I would, I would recommend having a quick skim or again, having a quick review of the Paul video that I linked earlier in the video, because I do talk about this section specifically towards the end of that video as well. Essentially, we have these two sections here where we're talking about an emission rate of 1% for validator rewards, which is designed to incentivize validator onboarding and retention in the form of Poll token. And we also have a 1% emission rate for ecosystem support. Again, I'll link the white paper in the description if you wanna check this out for yourself or consider checking out my previous video as well where we do talk about this. But essentially there's a 2% emission rate that is required, which is where this default emission manager smart contract comes into play. This is kind of intimidating and scary even for me, and I don't have a full in-depth understanding of how this is working, but you can kind of gather the pieces of the puzzle to say, okay, here's actually what's happening in this smart contract as well. So essentially up the top here, we have a 2% value in this big 18 decimal format. As you can see here is 0.0, .0 two, eight, five, six, nine, one, five, two, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so interest per year log two is just a formatted way in Solidity in this smart contract here to actually represent 2% emission rate. What we have in this function is a mint function again, which is going to allow for that 2% to be minted uh, as new supply of the poll token. So essentially what's happening here is it says, hey, here's the current supply. What's the new supply given a 2% interest rate with the elapsed time from the last time we minted to now, okay? And this is determined by this inflated supply after, which you provide a timestamp, okay? So how much time has elapsed? How many new poll tokens are we allowed to mint given a 2% annual emission rate? So let's take a look at this inflated supply after function here. So you can see this returns the total supply from compounded emission after time elapsed from start time. So essentially what's happening here is it's doing this kind of math formula to get a 2% emission rate. So it takes in a time and does this kind of um, intimidating function here. But what it's doing is actually just returning the supply given the current time and a 2% emission rate also given when this smart contract was deployed. So imagine where a year after this smart contract was deployed, we wanna see, okay, how much of the token can we have now, given we've had 365 days, a full year at a 2% emission rate per year, we should have 2% more of the token since it was deployed. So this would in theory return 
the 2% more value of 10 billion, which was the initial supply. So that's all that's happening and it needs to kind of uh, take effect year on year. It's a compounding 2% emission rate. So it's not you know necessarily 2% of 10 billion, it would be that for the first year and then 2% of that and 2% of that, 2% of that and, that and compounding emission of 2% each year. And it needs to return how much of the token should there be at a specific point in time given a 2% emission since the contract was deployed. Hopefully that makes sense. So all this mint function is doing then is saying, okay, how many tokens exist since last time this mint function was called? How many new tokens can I mint given the time that has elapsed and the 2% emission rate? Calculates how many tokens it's gonna mint, divides it by two. So 1% goes to the treasury and another percent goes to the stake manager here, which is representative of the validator rewards and the ecosystem support, 1% going to each of these addresses, which is exactly what it does. It says, okay, I'm gonna mint the total amount that I'm allowed to given a 2% um, emission rate. Then first it's going to transfer the poll to the treasury, which is 1%, as you can see here, got divided by two. And then it is going to send the rest, the other 1%, to the stake manager smart contract, which is the ecosystem support, I believe here. So 1% goes to the validator rewards, the other 1% goes to the ecosystem support. So one to the treasury amount, one to the stake manager amount here. So hopefully that makes sense. We have the actual ERC20 smart contract representing the poll token. We have the migration contract to migrate and unmigrate, go back and forth between Paul and Matic from a one-to-one -one swap. So you're going to call this migration function when you want to swap your Matic over to Paul. Then we have the default emission manager, which is responsible for creating new supply to actually provide the support outlined in the Paul token white paper. I hope that was able to clarify any of the questions that you had around this full upgrade process from Matic to Paul. At least it did a lot for me looking at the code exactly as it is. It's going to power the actual upgrade and migration process. Please remember to stay safe out there. There is going to likely be a lot of scammers trying to take your Matic. Check out the FAQ, all these questions answered. Do I need to do anything today as a Matic holder? What about an operator or a staker? What about a dev? Please feel free to check out the FAQ. Stay safe, listen to the official Polygon channels, and remember to keep your funds as safe as you can. I can't stress that enough. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button. Leave any questions that you have in the comments below. I read all of them. And if you wanna see more content like this, would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed this one, I hope to see you in the next one.